I'm Anu Drivers, I'm a cryptography researcher and I lead the consensus team at Definity. The internet computer will allow users to write pieces of software that we call canisters and these canisters can run on top of the internet computer in a very secure and reliable way. Secure meaning that the state of my canister will only change according to the rules of my canister and, not, and cannot be tampered with and very reliable meaning that my canister will not suddenly stop running. We want to achieve these properties while we know that some machines across the world might have connection issues or might even be malicious. Additionally, we want the internet computer to scale, meaning we can run more and more canisters on the internet computer. It can grow its capacity. Well, to achieve these goals, we have what we call subnets. So we split the canisters into smaller groups and each group will run on a subnet. And now we can make sure that we can always add subnets to the internet computer, thereby growing its capacity. And if we now zoom into a single subnet, this is where we want to get the security and reliability. We do that by a process called replication. Instead of having a single machine power a subnet, if we look under the hood, we see that many machines across the world will power a subnet. Each of them will have the state of all the canisters that run on the subnet, and each of them will process all the changes that come in. This approach of using replication to gain security requires a consensus protocol. The subnet must process different messages, namely messages from users to canisters and from canisters to canisters, and they must all process the same messages in the same order such that they achieve the same state. But each of the replicas that powers the subnet might actually see the messages in a different order. We use a consensus algorithm for all the nodes powering the subnet to agree on, a, on an ordering of the messages to process, such that they can all process the same messages in that order. We're going to reach consensus by using a blockchain. The messages that a subnet should process are grouped together and placed in blocks, and each block points to a previous block, thereby forming a blockchain. And now the security that we want is that all the replicas agree on the blockchain, thereby giving an ordering of the messages to execute. So more precisely, we want what we call safety. That is, if two honest replicas think they agree on the blockchain up to a certain point, then they must in fact have the same view of that blockchain up to that point. Secondly, we want liveness, meaning that the blockchain keeps growing and we keep agreeing on more and more blocks, Third, we want what we call validity, meaning that all the blocks and the messages in the blocks are actually valid. So let's dive into our consensus protocol. First, it's important to note that there are many consensus protocols out there, but we chose to design our own protocol tailored to the needs of the internet computer. Our protocol contains four main parts. The first is block making. This creates candidate blocks out of which we can build blockchains. The next is notarization. This is responsible for identifying valid blocks out of which we can build valid blockchains. Next, we're going to add the random beacon. The random beacon will give us some randomness that we can use to further enhance our protocol. And finally, we use finalization, which will tell us when we've actually reached agreement. So we'll start with the block maker. A replica on the subnet can serve as the block maker. It will have some messages available that should be processed by the canisters that run on this subnet. It might have a blockchain up to a certain height, let's say 29, and now it gathers messages that it has available waiting to be processed, groups them together into a block, and proposes an extension to the blockchain by sending it on this gossip network to the other replicas. Here, it's important to remember we want this protocol to work even if some participants are actually misbehaving. This means that we cannot elect one single block maker to extend the blockchain because this, this one block maker might actually be malicious and we could be stuck forever violating our liveness goal. We'll therefore have many replicas serving as block makers in every round. Now for the same reason, these block proposals may actually be invalid. 
To deal with that, we have the process called notarization. And the notarization process ensures that every round we have at least some valid block that can extend the blockchain. It works as follows. Let's look at Replica 1, and Replica 1 has a notarized blockchain up to height 29. If it now sees a block extending that blockchain at height 30, it will validate that block. And if Replica 1 sees that this block is valid, it might place a cryptographic signature on it that we call the notarization share. The notarization share will be sent to the other replicas in the subnet, expressing that Replica 1 thinks this is a good block. Now maybe replicas 3 and 4 might also create notarization shares on that same block. And now we say that three out of the four replicas is sufficient approval. We combine these three notarization shares into a single artifact, which we call the notarization, and now block 30 is notarized. The notaries will now move on to the next round and start looking for height 31 blocks. For these notarization shares, we use special signatures called multi-signatures. Multi-signatures have the nice property that many signatures on the same message can be compressed into a single constant size signature that proves that all the nodes actually approved. This means that even if we have a very large subnet with many notaries, the notarization will still be a small object. Notarization will not always work as well as I just described. The replica might see a valid block and create a notarization share on that block. However, it might now see another candidate block at the same height, which is also valid. If the replica would only sign one of the blocks, we might actually get stuck because some notaries might support one block while others notaries support another block and neither will ever get enough approval. Because we need this liveness property, the notary will now actually sign both of the blocks, making sure that at least one of them will become notarized. This way, we might actually obtain multiple notarized blocks at one height. Well, we want to finally achieve agreement on a blockchain. And so now we're going to add some things to our protocol to reduce the amount of notarized blocks that we get every round. We're going to introduce the random beacon. The random beacon is a random value shared by the replicas of the subnet, um, which we will then use to further enhance the protocol. A replica might have random beacon at height 29 and might decide that it's time to create the next random beacon. To do that, it will create a special signature on the previous random beacon value. And this is another artifact that we share via the gossip network, and this artifact we call a random beacon share. If we now get another random beacon share, we can combine the shares to construct the next random beacon value. We do this by using special signatures, namely threshold BLS signature. Now that we have this common randomness, we're going to use that to rank the block makers every round. So for example, using the random beacon that we created in round 23, we're going to rank the block makers uh, in round 24. So perhaps at round 24, we can agree that replica one is the top priority block maker, the rank zero block maker. We still need to have fallbacks because replica one might not do its job properly. So we can say that replica four might be chosen as the rank one block maker, the first fallback. And if that doesn't work, then replica three is the rank two block maker. And finally, replica two is the last resort. We're now going to use this block maker ranking to further enhance the notary behavior. More precisely, when a notary enters a round, it starts a timer, and for the first amount of time, it's only looking to create a notarization share for the block by the rank zero block maker. Only if that fails after a certain amount of time, it is willing to fall back to a block proposal from the rank one block maker. And after another timeout, it's willing to fall back even further to the rank two or rank three block maker. The goal is that we reduce the amount of notarized blocks that we get every round. Now we might still in some rounds have multiple notarized blocks, but hopefully in many rounds, we actually have only one notarized block from the rank zero block maker. If there is only one notarized block in a round, then we have actually already reached agreement. This is because a valid chain must exist of notarized blocks at every round. So now the challenge is, 
how do we know that we've actually reached agreement? We have a separate asynchronous finalization process that helps us detect when we have reached agreement. Remember that notaries create notarization shares until they see that one block is fully notarized, at which point they move on to the next round. Now we're going to have the notaries share some information about how many blocks they notary signed, which will help us reach agreement. More precisely, if the notary did not create any notarization shares for blocks other than the first notarized block itself for the round, it will create a, a different type of signature that we call the finalization share. The finalization share essentially means that I, Replica 1, did not notary sign any height 30 block other than this one. This is another artifact that it will gossip to the rest of the subnet. And if sufficiently many other replicas also create finalization shares on the same block, then we can aggregate them into a single finalization. Here, again, we need three out of four, or n minus f more generally. And whenever we see such a finalization on a block, we know that we can trust the blockchain up to that point, because a finalization is proof that no other notarized block at that height can exist. If the network behaves well, this means we can actually reach agreement on blocks very quickly, because we can very quickly create these finalization shares and reach agreement on the blockchain. But additionally, we are not at risk of these network attacks. So even if the network does not behave well, we know that we're still safe because we only rely on signatures and not on the assumption that we've seen all messages. So in summary, we have a consensus protocol that consists of four components. The block maker creates candidate blocks to extend the blockchain. We have a notarization process that ensures valid blocks are identified. We then add a random beacon that you can use to rank block makers and reduce the amount of notarized blocks we get at every round. And we use an asynchronous finalization mechanism that lets us know when a blockchain is actually agreed upon without needing to rely on networking assumptions. Together, this allows us to use replication within a subnet that gives us the security and the reliability that we want from the internet computer.